Hey, let's talk about selfies. This is why we most are here, isn't that so? Hi everyone, today we'll try to find out what is the state of Selfish OS, how it works on the most powerful device compatible as of August 2024, and what could be the future for it. YOLA, a 2011 startup, had a very rough last year. The company had to go through the restructuring process to get rid of the bloody Russian money. They are now called YOLA Boys and the car software team was detached as a separate company. From what I have been able to find out, YOLA aka YOLA Boys now has 20 employees, roughly 4 million euros turnover with a 30% revenue growth in 2023, probably from selling software for car industry. The challenging times you're experiencing have also affected Selfish OS. For example, the pre-installed Weather app hasn't worked for over a year now. You'll need to pay for the API from Forka Weather, but this could not be done last year due to frozen accounts. However, the company survived and even made a presentation for the first time in 11 years. More on that in my next videos. Despite having many other projects, these guys still believe in the future of Selfish OS and even consulted with the community about possible prospects. At least things seem to be going well right now. There are new investments, new community smartphone and already promised support for the fairly modern Sony Xperia 10 Revision 4 and 5. However, at the moment Sony Xperia 10 Revision 3 is still the fastest device officially supported. Let's take a look at what Selfish OS 4.6 codename Sauna is capable of and what we can expect in the nearest future. First, let's look at the Sony smartphone itself, just to recap the key points. The major drawbacks of Sony Xperia 10 Revision 3 include no LED settings in standard Android and uh, no tap to wake or lift to wake feature, unlike many modern smartphones or even YOLO phone from 2013. The screen itself is not 120Hz or even 90Hz, this is a serious problem for an Android smartphone. Moreover, Sony has severely limited always-on display for its budget model, so this feature works only during charging and only shows time. The good things are relatively good camera with Sony's trademark realism, good design without ugly notch, SD card slot and USB Type-C 3.1 port. The smartphone itself feels comfortable in hand due to the signature Sony's aspect ratio. It's slightly more compact than the Xperia 10 Revision 2 and much more comfortable than the 10 Plus, which is the first revision of Sony 10 series. Performance cannot be called an advantage, since the processor does not support shooting in 4K with 60 frames per second, but it's not too slow either, especially compared to previous Sony models. Let's just say it was a normal level for 2021 and more than enough for selfish choice. Let's start with the positive aspects. Selfish OS on Sony Xperia 10 Revision 3 has support for two SIM cards, SD cards and Type-C flash drives. The color recording function works well, which for iPhones was not available before iOS 18, while there are very few Android smartphone manufacturers that support this great feature. On this Sony, the native browser is already kind of usable in terms of scrolling, although of course Mozilla ESR78 engine is quite outdated, so waiting for an update here. Ad blocking, as well as support for other extensions, is unfortunately not provided. It's a pity, because everything works much faster without ads. There are also some improvements since my last review. Text selection seems to have become easier and a web page link can now be copied with just long tab. Next, GPS connection speed has always been an issue with all Sony models on Selfish OS. This doesn't apply to native hardware though. This particular problem appears to have been resolved with Sony Xperia 10 Revision 3. The speed of fingerprint scanner is slightly faster than on older Sony models, and I'm especially glad it's not a separate button like on 10 Plus. Sometimes for unknown reasons, fingerprint scanner stops working on Revision 3, which is inconvenient. Fortunately, you can reset this software model in settings. Here comes the most interesting part, system speed and smoothness. Has it become better? Ok, 
Okay, scrolling of Android apps is slightly better if we compare Vision 3 and an older Sony model. The majority of Android apps are fully functional, especially if you install Micro-G. Instructions on how to do it are in the description. No problems after Micro-G installation so far. Even banking apps work, so support for fingerprint scanner is not provided for Android apps. Naturally, with better hardware, apps are open faster and you can view documents quicker. It would be ridiculous not to watch movies in good quality on such a great screen. Here I'm playing a 9GB movie in this resolution and format. What's more, the movie is on a SD card, which is formatted in EXFAT format, even though EXFAT is incompatible according to YOLA's documentation. There may be some inconveniences with SD cards if you try to use Linux EXT4 format, since Windows and Mac computers are not able to show the content of EXT4 drives directly. But EXFAT works just fine for me even with Type-C flash drives. Although if you'd like to watch something in high resolution, I recommend using VLC rather than the built-in gallery, which can sometimes crash when rewinding. Also, RAM management in SelfishOS is still top-notch. Also, scrolling in native apps, and especially in the browser, has become better, it still falls short to the scrolling smoothness of a mid-price Android smartphone. Perhaps the 120Hz screen will improve this in future. We can see that increase in CPU performance by 60 or 70% improved the speed and fluidity a lot. Perhaps with doubled performance plus 120Hz screen, we could have browsing without noticeable lags, like it will mask some imperfections of software. Well, we'll see the Sony Xperia 10 Revision 4 and 5, both have Snapdragon 695, which is 20% more powerful than Snapdragon 690 here. Camera is the next big issue, compared to Sony Xperia 10 Revision 2, here we have a regression, since there is no support for all lenses, ultrawide and optical zoom lenses are disabled because there is a firmware issue in Google Camera 1 API. The solution is to integrate Camera 2 API, however YOLA doesn't have enough resources for reverse engineering all of this Google stuff. Currently a community is working on development here, hope they could eventually make it possible. This is one of the key problems that YOLA has in general, they usually only have 
time and energy for initial hardware support, so it's get fine-tuned these first several releases and then a device is left behind. Barely any Sony smartphone is 100% feature complete at this point, but I hope it will be different with Yola own hardware, the Community Phone 2, which I will also review later this year, so stay tuned. Next, many people complain about Xperia 10 Revision 3 battery drain in standby mode. This problem is most likely in software which Sony provides for AOSP. There's an issue probably in the processor course configuration. Now, the battery in my Sony Xperia 10 Revision 3 is in normal condition, at least according to AIDA app. When the smartphone is idle, it drains about 1% per hour with Android app support enabled and one SIM card used. In general, I can say that battery life on Xperia 10 Revision 3 is uh, acceptable. In comparison, my 2 SIM iPhone 11 with replaced battery drains half a percent per hour. At the same time, Xperia 10 Revision 3 with 2 SIM cards had battery down by 10% overnight, so it turns out that with 1 SIM it discharged even faster. Ok, battery life is strange on this model, hopefully it will be better with Sony Xperia 10 Revision 4 and 5 or maybe on Yola Phone 2. Anyway, with active use of Wi-Fi, 4G and Android apps, normally the battery on Sony with Selfish OS should last all day. There are many feature requests and bug reports on YOLO forum. One of the biggest is to add an ability to block calls and SMS from individual numbers. Among the top requests are also better support for VO LTE, Bluetooth connectivity in Android apps, fingerprint scanner working in Android apps and more. Unfortunately, YOLO doesn't have the resources to cover these needs quickly. However, Selfish OS is still better than the few Linux on smartphone competitors. At least in Selfish OS 4.6, Sony's Google Assistant button is finally been used used as a camera button. Remapping of this button on Sony Xperia 10 Revision 3 was requested by so many users. A story about selfie choice on Sony would be incomplete without a comparison with native hardware. Fortunately, I have this original Yola phone to compare with. The biggest disappointment is performance of Android apps and games on modern Sony compared to Yola phone. Scrolling on Sony has constant during, apps and games really perform better on a 10-year-old Yola phone, although it may be hard to see on video. I'm not the person to say what exactly Android support lacks on ported version of Selfish OS, maybe hardware acceleration, maybe other things, but the difference between Yolophone and Sony, which is 20 times faster and 8 years newer, is pretty obvious. Surprisingly, performance of native apps is different as well. Scrolling on Yolophone looks better in some places, especially after changing direction of scrolling. It goes without saying that Sony is many times faster, however, scrolling in the native browser and in Firefox too sometimes seems smoother on Yolophone. So Yolophone uses a number of tricks for smooth inertia scrolling, which for example includes a fragmented gradual rendering of a web page. I must mention that the efficient RAM management is still there, both on modern port for Sony and on antique YOLO phone with only 1GB of RAM. The system keeps everything in memory, even Android apps, and YOLO phone shows something I haven't seen since BlackBerry OS X or peak iPhone days. In this aspect, it's a tie between the devices.
From my experience, selfie choice in 2024 can be a daily driver, at least on Sony Xperia 10 Revision 3. From my point of view, selfie choice is many times better than other Linux counterparts such as PostMarket OS, Manjaro Linux Mobile, Plasma Mobile, Librem, Ubuntu Touch, etc. All of them are ugly, painfully slow and hardware support is much worse out of the box. Camera may not work at all, let alone different lenses we were talking about. Besides, apps on these systems are usually just recompiled Linux programs for ARM with bad touch input and UI. At the same time, on Selfishware there are dozens of great community apps, including a native YouTube client, native Telegram, Signal, usable maps, Wi-Fi printing, players, readers apps and much, much more. As always, everything is known in comparison, with Selfishware has been way better. Of course, there are numerous more feature-rich forks of Android open source projects, which are still well Android. At the same time, SelfishOS is not Android, but it supports Android apps and does it great. Superiority of SelfishOS is especially obvious on native hardware like Yolophone, however, the system is quite usable on Sony 10 Revision 3 as well. Now, we are waiting for Sony 10 Revision 4 and 5 support. These models, however, still won't have 120Hz display and their processor is only 20% faster. Now, who could be possibly interested in Selfish X as installable OS for mid-range Sony smartphones? I personally recommend Selfish OS to journalists, as you won't be afraid of Pegasus, political activists, maybe the military. This would be a great backup secure phone that supports modern Android apps, while its privacy is guaranteed since you have full control over it without rooting. That is, if you can find the right Sony model and reflash it, of course, considering it's hard to find devices with pre-installed Selfish OS on the market. That narrows down the audience somewhat. Well, now we are talking about tech-savvy journalists and activists. Or else, which doesn't sound improbable, Yola will be able to negotiate with Voila, Pinephone, Fairphone or other similar phone makers, like they already did with Reader for Yola Phone 2. We'll see where it goes. Thank you for watching this video, be sure to subscribe and let me know in the comments if you are impressed with selfish OS performance on these Sony smartphones.